I think everybody that lives in Syracuse has a dome memory. It's definitely an iconic place. It's a uh, landmark. It's like the beacon, if you will. I mean, you can see it from everywhere. The dome to me symbolizes unity. It's family. It's, you know, friends. It's community. There's a lot that that dome represents. I think it's something the community can be proud of. People that live here are typically big SU fans. Everybody knows where it is or has probably been there at some point in time in their life. It's part of Syracuse. It is Syracuse. We've been fortunate to have a lot of great customers that have asked us to be part of some pretty significant projects. The most significant of late has been putting a new roof on the formerly known as the Carrier Dome, now the JMA Wireless Dome. The roof that was on the dome when we took it off was actually the second roof. The fabric that they had on the roof was about a 20 year lifespan. A lot of folks don't realize that roof is basically a balloon. The dome has giant air handling units inside of it that would constantly run to inflate the roof. In the winter time, whenever there was a larger snowfall, it would put the roof in jeopardy because they'd have to go up and get the snow off the roof. So it never really an ideal design for our climate. The university saw the opportunity to solve some operational issues with it by replacing it with a more traditional roof structure. Behind us is one of our treasure projects, the Syracuse University Dome. The dome was such a unique project for me personally and for Hainer Hoy. It was by far and away one of the biggest things we had ever done. One of the original designs was that it was all the same uniform height all the way around, but they thought it had more character to give it a little bit of an elliptical shape. It's a cool look. I think it's different. For somebody that doesn't know the construction aspect of it. It kind of looks like a roller coaster. To keep it up, it was based on tension, so they had to keep maintaining the entire shape to the center of the building. I think the lights on top, at least at night, are really cool. You can see it from anywhere in the city. One of the cranes that was used to erect the structure was a massive crane. It was actually brought in on like 80 tractor trailer loads. One of the students created a social media page for the crane and named it Walt, and actually was doing merchandise sales for Walt the Crane. I laughed, I thought it was funny, and about five minutes later, I dove into it, I'm like, I gotta find it. I followed an Instagram account a while ago that was dedicated to one of the cranes. A student jumped on one of our man lifts and made a rep video of the crane. That was pretty interesting to see the next day. I own Dusky's Sports Bar and Grill in Phoenix. We just got a really big following for sports, Syracuse in general. So it was cool to have a mural done that kind of represented a lot of the personal favorites. Someone came in here who had worked on the dome and when they were demoing the original top, they cut pieces of it. So the artist, he had a cool idea of taking the original part of the dome and he cut it out in the shape of the numbers and he put it on the numbers. The dome was the main attraction. There's definitely a lot of factors that affected the job from a risk perspective. The safety protocol on the project was at max. A wrench dropping from 150 feet could ruin somebody's day. So everybody working had to tether their tools Tools. There were some moments in time where it was a little scary. We had contractors swinging heavy steel. It's kind of free flowing up in the air until it gets to a certain spot up top where they could grab it. Made your heart jump for sure. Every piece that went up. If you're not a little bit nervous every day, I think you're not trying hard enough. I knew we had to calm people down and say, we're good, we've got this, we've done this lots of times. But the back of my head, I still was, oh dear God, I hope I'm right. It was an opportunity to lead a team of very high performers. We wouldn't just get anybody to go up there. I won't go up there. The guys in here were hanging off ropes, doing most of this stuff. Climbers from all around the world. There were people from all around the world working here. When the pandemic hit and New York State shut down, our workforce, which were a lot of folks from Europe, left the site and went home. So we lost a big chunk of our workforce right after we tore the roof off. The air system that kept the dome inflated was shut down and the roof started coming down and within a couple hours the roof was sagging and the team started dismantling the roof. The work is so specialized that it's not like you could just call 10 different people to come do it. There were literally probably half a dozen firms capable of doing it. We tore the roof off on March 1st and we had to have the new roof put on and ready for the first game on September 20th. That was a very scary moment in time because we were past the point of no return. The decision was made that we were going to move forward with the project and not slow up. We were going to try to accelerate it as best we could. Holding people accountable in that atmosphere and that environment is probably one of the most challenging situations I've faced. We had a great team of people that figured it out, put their heads together. They had the attitude that they weren't going to give up and they weren't going to fail just like we did as a company. We went in with the mindset that we could do it. Last day I think everybody was excited knowing that that last piece was going in. It was a huge ordeal with how tightly everything had to be put together and like the laser measurements that they had to line up. All the steel all came together, everything lined right up. They didn't have to cut anything out. We were supposed to be done at five o'clock. We were done at I think 4.55. We all had a beer in celebration of completing the project right on time for the first home football game. There's a lot of folks that won't have any idea the amount of effort that went into it. I really didn't understand the depth 
of it. And I realized, oh, we're doing the dome. I had no idea what that meant. The job was run 24-7 for the duration of the job. We had over 350 people working at one point. It was an insane project just to witness. I'm amazed that they managed to build the whole upper roof structure. Trying to do any of that seems like a nightmare. The award of excellence over 100 million in mega commercial is presented to Syracuse We have a tremendous number of extremely talented individuals that can build anything. There are a lot of people that were small parts that made that massive thing come together. We pulled off, uh, I don't want to say a miracle, <laughs> but it was a pretty large feat. We had no serious injuries for 660,000 hours. It truly was amazing and it's a testimony to all the people that worked there. It certainly was a humongous undertaking. We had never done a stadium project before. I thought it was a wonderful challenge that we were ready to take on and I'm glad we did. Look at the dome now, it feels like my heart is there just a little bit still. It's a one of a kind. I'll never be on another project like that again. You can't do something else like this. It's a once in a lifetime.